encourage you to um, um, turn there with me to Genesis, Genesis, Ephesians chapter number five. And I'll give you a recap of what's happening here while we're turning there, because it's important for us to know uh, what's happening. Paul is writing to a group of believers and these believers need instruction because if you're a child of God, you need instruction from God. OK, and it's a mixed church. Some of the people are Gentiles and some of the people are Jews and they're coming together because when you become a Christian, the, the walls that used to divide you don't divide you anymore. Right. Once you maybe at one time in your life, you were divided by race. But now because God's in your life, you don't let race divide you. Somebody say amen. At one time in your life, you probably would never talk to somebody who was on the red side if you're on the blue side or talk to somebody who's on the blue side if you're on the red side. But because of Christ, you don't allow politics to uh, 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 divide you. Somebody say amen. amen. Division has no place in the house of God. Who do you think is the person that tries to make us divided against one another? The devil. Satan, because he knows that even though somebody may not agree with you politically, you still need them. Even though somebody may have a different skin color than you, you still need them. Even though somebody may have a different socioeconomic status than you, you still need them. I don't care how many degrees that you have on your wall. And if you have some, God bless you. But even though you have degrees, it doesn't mean you don't need people who don't have degrees anymore in your life. And if you don't have a degree, God, let me say it this way. God saves all the way from the block to the boardroom. OK, God is no respecter of persons. He will save you no matter where you are and who you are. And in Ephesians, Paul is reminding us the theme for the whole book is two words in Christ. He says your identity should be in Christ moving forward. So when I'm making decisions, I make them how in Christ. When I'm looking for a partner. How do, what's the lens that I use to look? Okay, when I'm ready to make a big decision in my life, before I make this decision, where do I go to seek the decision? Every choice that I make has to be through Christ. And let me tell you why. Because we make bad decisions. And, don't leave me out here if I'm not the only one, we make bad decisions thinking they're good decisions. And when do we find out a good decision was a bad decision? After, when we look back and we say, man, them flags was as red as a stop sign. But I called them pink because I wanted something. Amen? So he is telling us throughout this book that it's important for us to seek Christ and to live for Christ and to walk with Christ. The first part is about knowing who you are in Christ Chapter one, two, and three, and chapter four, five, and six is about being who you are. Because Christianity is not just about talking the talk. It's also about walking the, amen, somebody. Let's stand, and we'll read this together. Ephesians chapter number five, and I'm going to read verses one through, whoo, man, I'll go through 10. Ephesians chapter five, verses one through 10. If I drop out and don't say a word, you say the word that's there. Now I'm reading from the English standard version. If you're reading from a different Bible, still say the word, no shame. Okay. All right. Therefore be what? Okay. So sometimes we got followers. Sometimes we got imitators. Be imitators of who? God as beloved children and walk in what? Love as Christ has loved us. And he gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to who? But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, somebody say instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you are sure of this, that everyone that is sexual Im sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of this, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So he says, walk as children of what? Light. For the fruit of light is not found, 
for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true and try to discern what is pleasing to who the Lord take no part in unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them I said I was reading a verse number 10 and that's verse number 11 you can have your seats in the presence of the Lord Father, we thank you for your people that are gathered here. I pray that their hearts would be open, not to hear my voice, but to hear your voice. Help us to uh, have spirits that are ready to do what we hear, to be not only hearers of your word, but doers also. I pray, God, that we would walk in a way that gives you glory, walk in a way that's honest and integral and brings great praise to your name. Let us be transformed in our minds now, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. If you're taking notes, I should have started my timer. If, we're take, if you're taking notes, write down the topic, which is this right here. How to be like God. How to be like God. If you grew up in my era, you wanted to be like who? Mike, okay, right? That's how you, you just told your age by saying that, okay? How to be like Mike. But... God, Paul is not telling us to do that. He's telling us to do this. Hit, I'm going to, before you hit that next button, some people are going to pop on the screen. I want you to tell me who their parent is if you know it. Go ahead, hit the first one. Who's that person's parent? Say it loud. LeBron James. Okay, y'all doing good so far. Okay, uh, go to the next one. Denzel Washington. Okay, some of y'all didn't know that. That's okay. That's because my picture might be a little distorted there. These next few should be easier if you're a part of Life Church. Who, who, who's this person's mama? Say it loud. Who's this person's mama? Sheena. Okay, what's her name? Okay, some of y'all know, some of y'all don't. Okay, go to the next one. Who's this person? What's her name? And what's her daddy name? Q. Okay, he right there next to her. Okay, all right. Next one. Who's this dude? Zamari. And who's Zamari's mama name? Shaquilla. Okay. Thank you very much. Go to the next slide. Bam. Okay. So here's what God is telling. I know you're like, what does that have to do with the message? You know who the child is based on who the parent is. Raise your hand if you have ever sat down and had dinner with LeBron James in here. None of us. Raise your hand if you've ever got a text from LeBron James. None of us, okay? You know Bronny James because you've seen LeBron James, right? Here's what this passage is trying to communicate to us. He says, I want you to be an imitator of God. In other words, I want you to look like God. Let me be very clear here in my distinction. I am not saying there are some things about God that we can be and there are some things we cannot be. God is omnipresent, which means that God is everywhere all at the same time. Can you be omnipresent? No. God is all powerful, which means he has all power at all times in his hands. Are you all powerful? OK, God has all knowledge. Some of y'all act like who help me, Lord Jesus. Who help me, Holy Ghost. Some of us act like we got all knowledge, but do you have all knowledge? No. So there are non-communicable traits of God and there are communicable traits of God. And the ones that we can do, God is love. Can we be loving? God is peaceful. Can we be peaceful? God is forgiving. Can we forgive? God prays. Can we pray? God is generous. Can we be generous? So when Paul says, therefore, be imitators of God, he's saying in order to be like God, you have to know God. And this is why your time with God matters. Because if you don't spend time with God, social media will tell you who God is. If you aren't reading the Bible for yourself, you'll depend on a TikToker to communicate the Bible to you. And when I preach and when PG preaches, we're an open church Bible. In other words, I want you to check what I'm saying based on the Bible because I can lie, but the Bible cannot. I can be untrue, but the Bible says, let God be true and every man be a lie. So he says, I want you to be imitators of God. And, 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 and God, when I say God like or how to be like God, I'm saying 
how to operate in a way that shows the world you belong to God and in a way that glorified God. I'm not talking about the Hebrew Israelites. We're all gods. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are not a God. Okay. I know people are like, no, man, we're made in the image of God. So that means I'm a God. I'm made in the image of Alfred Foster. That's my dad. I am not Alfred Foster. I do not have an AAP or, um, AARP card yet. I have not driven buses for, for, my, for my life. I am not from Louisiana. These are things that he is, I am not. But I can be like him. And in the, in the way of being like God, he's saying, I want you to show the world who I am, not act like you are perfect because you are not perfect. Not to act like you don't make mistakes because God don't make no mistakes, but you make mistakes. So he's saying, show my glory in the world. And some of us are saying, well, does that mean we're supposed to be slaves for God and do whatever he says do? No, because if you open back up, if you've got your Bible open in verse number one, follow with me. He says, be imitators of God. How? As what? Beloved children. He says, I want you to imitate me, the Greek word here means mimic, because you love me. He, it took everything in me not to say what you told me to say last night when I said that. But anyways, here's the truth of the matter is this. Whatever it is that you love, more than likely you want to be like it. Some of us came from households where our mother was there. We loved our mom and we, we, we tried to be like mom. Some of us came from households with dad. We loved dad. We tried to be like that. Whoever it is that raised you, something in them you wanted to be like. Maybe they were a school teacher, so you wanted to be a school teacher. Maybe they did hair, so you wanted to do hair. Maybe they, they uh, were, could sing, so you could sing, Right? You want to be an imitator of what you look up to. So Paul is saying, I want you to desire God. And how do we do that? I could spend 15 minutes talking about how he says, I don't just want you to imitate God as children. But what's the word he says before children? He says, I want you to imitate God as what kind of children? Beloved children. In other words, he says, I want you to understand that God looks at you and he doesn't see your worst mistakes. Glory to God. God looks at you and he doesn't see your failures. Glory to God. God looks at you and he doesn't see the biggest tragedies that you had in your life. God looks at you and he doesn't see the shame that you've been walking around with. God looks at you and he doesn't see you with the condemnation that you see on yourself. God looks at you and he does not see you as somebody who can't get right. He does not see you based on your mistakes or your error. When he looks at you, he says, that is my beloved child. Who? That's the one I'm loved. I, I love that one right there. I value that one right. There. Let me get that into your spirit. That when God sees you, He's not waiting on you to mess up. He says that's the one I love. When God sees you, He's not waiting to scold you for you falling short of His glory. He says I love that one right there. When you turn your back on him, he says, I refuse, hallelujah, to turn my back on you because I love you. He says, you are beloved to me. And because you are beloved to me, I want that to cause you to walk in a different way. So he says, because you are beloved, walk in love. And this term walk means to live your life in such a way that shows that you love God. Don't let hate rule your life. Don't let bitterness rule your life. Don't let the past rule your life. He says walk in love, which means the way people should know that you're connected to Christ is your love. If you're taking notes, write this down. It's going to sound funny, but it's true anyway. Love is the birthmark of the believer. Let me say it again. Love is the birthmark of the believer. In other words, if you're a Christian and you ain't loving, guess what? You ain't a Christian. I'm going to tell you because I'm your pastor and it's my obligation. If you are a Christian and you are not loving, you are not indeed a Christian because Christians are loving and we're not loving because we want to love. Why are Christians loving? Because God is love. And because I'm close to God, I become like God. 
okay? Gina was a dancer back in the day, okay? She was dancing. She'd been dancing since she was like four years old. She danced for what, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years? I don't know, a lot of time. But because I've been married to her for 14 years, guess who else got moves now? And I know you think I don't got no moves, but if you think I don't got no moves, something wrong with you because I've been so close to her. Let me break dance. But because I've been in proximity to her, things that she is good at, I become good at. Because I'm in proximity to her, not only because I'm in proximity to her, but because I love her. I want to connect with her over the things that she connects with. That's why you're not in a relationship now, because you did everything they wanted you to do, but they didn't do none of the stuff you wanted to do. Some of y'all still mad. You was clapping kind of hard when I said that. Right, right there. You was, you was feeling that right there. Yeah, Rodney. <laughs> but he says, he says, I want you to be imitators of God. And he says, walk in love as Christ loved us. So he's saying, walking in love means living sacrificially. Because Christ on the cross gave up something. Jesus on the cross, what did he give up? His life. So he's saying to walk in love means to sacrifice for the people you love. Watch me. I've said it before, and I'm not ashamed to stand flat-footed and say it again. No sacrifice, no love. Little sacrifice, little love. A lot of sacrifice, what? So if you love people, but you're not sacrificing for them, you don't really love them. If you are not willing to be inconvenienced at times because of the love you have for someone, it might be lust. It might be infatuation. Because the Bible says that if you are to be imitators of God, I want you to walk in love, which means after uh, he says, I want you to walk in love in this way as Christ loved us and because Christ loved us, he gave himself for us. In other words, love is is the motivator to do what you don't want to do sometime. Love will make you get out of the bed when you just went to sleep an hour ago. Love will make you take your phone off of Do Not Disturb and go and look through your messages and call back people that you wish didn't call you in the first place. Love will have you borrow money to people that you know cannot pay it back. I'm talking about love. Love will have you out here looking a silly way at a moment but he says you have to love sacrificially he says who gave himself up and it goes on to say as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God I'm not I'll break this down this way in the Old Testament when they sinned what did they have to bring to God a sacrifice and what kind of sacrifice was it animal sacrifices okay it was a lamb or it was a goat okay so what they would do is they would put it on a fire Okay, or an altar that had fire on it, and they would consume it. And here's the only kinds of the primary kind of offerings that God wanted burnt offerings. And what does that mean? That's not a jab at Wesley Snipes. It's talking about it's talking about how the sacrifice has to be completely consumed. In other words, God says, When you offer something to me, I want total surrender. Mm-hmm. He says, the sacrifice I accept. I'm glad you sacrificed to be here this morning. Keep sacrificing. But if this is the only time you sacrifice to be with God, we got a problem here. Because God says, I want you to sacrifice for me continually. So the burnt offering after the lamb or the goat was burned, it would lift up a fragrance and it would go up to heaven. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You didn't have barbecue before and you, you can walk out your house and you like... Somebody barbecuing. And some of y'all are real good. You like somebody's barbecuing chicken. And some of y'all are real, real good. You like somebody's barbecuing chicken legs. Some of y'all is amazing. Ooh, somebody's barbecuing three thighs, a wing, a breast, two breasts. My bad, okay. And a steak. Because you're familiar and it's pleasing to you. And God says, when you sacrifice for others, 
it's pleasing to me. When you give something, when you have something that you could do with your time, but you instead give that time to God, he says, that's pleasing to me. When you get some money and you could do something else with the money, but you say, Lord, before I do what I want with this money, I'm going to give some back to you because you gave me the strength to get where I am right now. That's a well sacrificing, pleasing to God. When you say they don't deserve to be forgiven, but you've forgiven me, so I'm going to forgive them. That's well pleasing to God. When they come at you wild, and you get ready to say some curse words, but then you remember, I'm saved now. So I don't talk like that. And watch me. You don't not talk like that because you forgot all the curse words. No, 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 no. You still know them. You still know them all. But you say, I want my life. God's watching me. That's why I live the way that I live, because God's watching me. That's why I don't hold it against you, because God's, I'm not doing this so people can praise, so people can glorify, so people can say, oh, he doing this, she doing that. I'm not doing this for people, because people don't ever appreciate you the way that you need to be appreciated anyway. God says, I want you to do it for me. He says, walk in love. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, walk in love. So you have to be sacrificial and you have to be kind and you have to be generous in your giving. OK, now I'm going to tell you all this because it's about to get tight real quick. I'm glad we had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad some of y'all was weeping. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, you're awesome. Some of y'all had snot coming from your nose. That's OK. Some of y'all tears. Was, I saw eyelash come out of place. You had to put it back up. You know what I'm saying? I saw the tears from the brother. It fell into your beard and, and, and what used to be black became gray, you know, because the Beijing and all that. So we had a wonderful time in the presence of the almighty God but in the American church sometimes we think the church is a place that I go and I feel good and you should feel good sometimes when you come here but if I'm doing my job right sometimes you should leave here and you should be a little mad if I'm doing my job right sometimes I should leave here you should leave here and you'd be like I don't know why he said that but then you go and look in the Bible and you're like oh that's why so if we're going to grow, we have to be mature. Why am I giving you this uh, 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 disclaimer? Because I'm about to say some things that our society agrees with that God disagrees with. And I want you to know that when God, here's what repentance really is. And here's what living your life for God really is. It's agreeing with God. That's all it is. It's agreeing with God. Okay. All right. So here's the next part. Okay. It says, he says, I want you to walk in love. And here's what I want to say about this. In verse, I'm not even going to get there yet. Love has two sides. Okay? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, love has two sides. Okay? Love has a positive side, right? But love also has a negative side. Okay. Shout out, what are some things you do for somebody you love? Somebody give me one example. Cook. Bam. Money. You give them money. You cook for them. What else? Time. You give them time. One more thing. Discipline. Okay. So you give them uh, uh, money, you cook for them, you discipline, and you give them time. That's something you do for somebody you love. And that's the positive side. But if you love someone, right, there are also the other side. As somebody say the negative side, right? And that means this. There are certain people that I don't cook for. Oh, y'all cook for everybody. OK, there are certain people because I love my wife, I cannot give my time to. There are certain people because I love my wife, I cannot give money to. Amen. We need security, y'all. We need security. OK. She, she's still, yeah, right. Tiffany's here. Okay, we ready. She ready. Okay, so there, the, the, the positive side is that I give time, I give discipline, I give money, I, I cook for, but there's some, I don't give discipline to everybody because Jesus said it this way, those whom I love is who I chasten or who I correct. So in other words, if you're foul and God tells you you're foul, don't be mad at God. You should be praising God because he loves you enough to tell you, don't go back. Don't answer the phone. Don't answer are you up text at 1.15 in the morning. He loves you enough to tell you don't do it. 
And this is where we have a problem. Because in America, love says, do whatever you feel. But God, who is the creator of love, is saying, just because they call it love, does not mean it is love. And that's not hate speech. That's God talking. And we have gotten to a place in this country and in countries all over the world where we say, I'm going to take something God created and I'm going to redefine it. Guess who made marriage, y'all? God. I cannot take marriage and redefine it because God created it. Hear me very clearly. That does not mean that you don't love people that do it differently than the way that God created it. But that means that I understand that this is the original purpose of which God created for it to be. So I can love you, watch me, and not agree with you. I can love you and say, here's what, here's what obedience to God really means. And here's what repentance really means. It means agreeing with God. It doesn't mean you always do everything right. But it means I agree with God. It means I went too far. I agree with God that I went too far. I said yes when I should have said no. I agree with God. So in this portion, in verse number three, he says, but sexual immorality and all impurity and covetous is not even to be named among you. Sexual immorality, uh, sexual immorality in the Greek is a word pornea, which sounds very similar to an American word that we use called pornography. This word means anything that is outside of the confines of sex between a man and a woman who are married is sexual immorality. Let me say it again. The way that God intended for it to be, those are the confines that God creates for sexual immorality. So if I step outside of those bounds, I am outside of the work and the way that God intended for it to be. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's understanding the difference between what God calls love and what the world calls love. The world says love however and whoever you want to love. But God says, no, there's a certain way to love. How could I come up in your house, Shante, and decide, no, I'm going to move this couch over here. No, we're going to move the TV over here. No, I'm going to take this stuff out the refrigerator. You, you will probably beat me up. And she, she might not beat me up, but she'll at least kick me out. Okay, if, if I came to Yolanda's house, I said, no, nah, we putting the dogs over here and we putting the cat over here and I'm going to take the biggest bedroom and you get down here, you got to sleep in the living room. She would say, listen, where my husband? So, so he can get, up, uh, get Alan Foster up out of here. Oh, and why would you do that? Because this is not your house. And because this is not your house, you don't make these rules. Let me help you. So the Bible is saying sexual immorality is anything that outside. So fornication, which is sex before marriage, is outside of the bounds of God. All right. Uh, men and men and men sleeping together is outside of the bounds of God. M women and women sleeping together is outside the sounds of God. But it doesn't stop right there. Pornography is outside of the bounds of God. Masturbation is outside of the lines of God. Now, let me help you because I know you like, oh, you didn't tell me it was going to be this tight, Alan Foster. You told me it was going to be tight, but you didn't tell me it was going to be this tight. Jesus says, excuse me, Paul says through Jesus, he says, I mean, uh, Jesus says through Paul, he says in verse number five, he said, you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually Im uh, immoral, okay, has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what the Bible is saying here. The Bible is not saying that if you've done this, you cannot go to heaven. The Bible is saying if you live your... <clears throat> If you live your life in habitual sin of any kind, you will not be a partaker of heaven. He's not saying, let me help you, because I know you're like, man, did you come to beat me up? No, I didn't come to beat you up. I came to help you up because we have to understand what God's standard is. We have to understand what God expects. And God says, I want you to know that if you struggled with this and are struggling with this now, you can come to God and God can deliver you. Okay, I ain't gonna ask you to raise your hand if you ever had, I'm not, listen to me, I am not asking you to raise your hand if you ever had sex outside of the confines of marriage because a whole lot of hands up in here would go. But the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians, okay? The Bible says some of us were thieves. I'm paraphrasing. Some of us were robbers. Some of us were whoremongers. Some of us were homosexuals. Some of us were sleeping with other men's wives and sleeping with other ladies' husbands. And such were some of you. But he says, but you are washed. Now, 
and you are cleansed now. In other words, with God, it doesn't matter how you were born because you can be born again. Do you hear what I'm saying? And God's saying, I'm not saying this to you to shame you. I'm saying this to you because I want to love you the right way. I'm not talking about any of you. I'm talking about the world as a whole. Some of the worst decisions or some of the biggest consequences of our lives have been based on who we had sex with. We here now. Some of us, isn't it crazy? Ain't it crazy how one day it can seem amazing and the same thing the next day is disgusting. Isn't it amazing how y'all laid down together and now y'all can't stand each other? This is because we have stepped outside of the bounds of what God intended. God's saying, I'm not telling you to save yourself till you get married because I'm trying to keep you from having fun. I'm not trying to keep you from uh, something. I'm trying to keep you for something. I'm not trying to keep you from the fun. I, I could pass this mic around here today and start with me and talk about the consequences of me believing that I have sexual freedom. Sexual freedom will make you get in bondage. Let me tell you about what sexual freedom will do. Let me, let me show you this video and then I'll move on. This is what the enemy makes us think about sexuality. Pause this. Let me pause. Go back. Can y'all see the video? Uh oh, go back. Okay, hold on. So what is this? This is water. My man's about to jump in water. I like water. Jumping in water is fun. It's a good time, okay? And it seems like it's going to be a good time, okay, until this happens. So watch. Fun time. Swimming, swimming, swimming. Do you get my point? My point is, whoo, this one's not, not, man, this girl's looking fine. My Lord Jesus. Coke bottle, okay? 16 ounce, two liter, whatever you like. When we go down south, they got three liters, however you like it. You can have whatever you like, and it looks like fun. But sometimes fun has serious consequences. Let me tell y'all, okay? It's fun until child support come knocking at your door. I got to help you. It was fun, but now the court is involved, and it's not fun anymore. It was fun, but now you want them to limit their access to what they're doing because you don't know what's happening at the house when you're not there or you don't want their mama around or you don't want their daddy around or you don't know what they tell them. but it was fun and God is saying y'all I've given you sexuality and it's a beautiful thing but it's a beautiful thing in the right confines this week my something happened I'm not gonna say what happened even though I want to so bad but something happened and it opened up the conversation for us to have a sex talk a sex notice I said a sex talk because back in the day we used to say the sex, sex talk but if you only talking to your kids about sex one time you got a problem because they talking about it at the lunch table they talking about it on the bus they talking about it in the bathroom they might be doing more than talking about it in the bathroom so you have to have multiple conversations with your kid and you've got to be the first one to have the conversation because many of us believe lies because we heard it first from somebody else i used to work at a high school and i remember i was at the high school and the dude was like there was like i was the cool you know uh, hall monitor say so it was like alwin mr foster whatever they call me come over here it was like yeah, i want you to hear son and just fact check me just just correct me i know i'm right but correct me and it was like i know it's true so just tell me it's true when you have sex standing up you can't get pregnant right <laughs> true story i said this is why you need to be in class man you don't never need to be out in the hallway if you believe that. But here's why they believed it. Because somebody told them that first. And because they heard it first, they did that. So my, uh, we had a situation where we talked to our kids about sexuality. And one of the things I explained to them, and I want to explain to you, is that sex is like a fire. And fire is neither 
well, I don't want to say it's neither good or bad. It's actually a good thing. But if you take a fire that happens, some of you all have gas stoves, and you take a fire and you put that fire in the middle of a forest, guess what you now have? A forest fire. And it destroys everything, animals and wood and plants because it's destructive. But if you take that same fire and you put it in a furnace, what does that fire do? heat your whole house and God says fire within the not only that if you have a gas stove the fire is what helps you to be able to eat it helps you to nourish you and God says when you do in my way sex is not destructive when you do in my way sex is not STDs when you do in my way sex will not have you at the clinic when you do in my way sex will not have you before a judge or a magistrate when you do in my way Sex will be nourishing to you. I wish a married man or woman would say amen. Amen. When you do it God's way, you won't have to worry about, well, who else is sleeping with him? Are they telling me the truth? I got to pass to you. Are they telling me the truth or do I have to find out the wrong way? God's saying, I am putting confines around you not to punish you, but to protect you. And God wants you to know that he wants you to walk. I got to keep doing this thing. I got a few more minutes, then I'm done. Okay? He says, so I don't want you to walk as darkness, but I want you to walk as children of light. I'm wrapping up this point, and then we'll move on to the next one. But he doesn't stop with sexual morality. He says impurity. In other words, doing anything outside of God's way. Covetous, which some of us, we're living our life that way. We want everything that everybody else got, but don't want to work for nothing. He said that's covetous. One of the first Ten Commandments is thou shalt not covet a man's what? Wife. Okay. In other words, you can be covetous for sexual things. Some of us are issue and uh, uh, he goes on and, and he's also naming impurity is entertainment that does not glorify God. So you can't be sexual. Let's say you want to be celibate. God bless you. You better be celibate. Let's say you want to be sexually pure. You can't watch everything and be sexually pure. You can't watch every movie. You can't watch every show. You can't go to every website. You can't look at every magazine. You got to block some people on Instagram. You got to block some people on Facebook. You got to uh, turn, you, 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 you got to put limitations in. Because you can't eat lust and birth sexual purity. You can't consume pornography and then produce sexual purity. It doesn't work that way. God says, outside of my realm, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. He says, I want you to be pure. I want you to be clear about what. And here's the thing about sexuality. And this is why God wants us to wait also. You'll get a taste of something or you'll get a piece of something. And that piece of something will have you being irrational. But the sex was good. Now your credit is messed up. But the sex was good. I'm talking to you. And some of us laughing been there too. And some of us who ain't laughing is the one that was getting the stuff. And why is that? Because sex can impair your judgment. You think this is good, so you ignore verbal aggression. You ignore, you one of my men, but you ain't my man. I got a roster. You got a roster. You better be talking about the Lakers. So, so, so sex is powerful, but God says when you abuse it, the power becomes negative, and you suffer because of the power, and you're sad because of the power, and you looking up their Facebook page without liking none of their pictures because of the power, and you stalking on them Instagram without, with, with, with the power. And he says, I want you to walk like me. He said, I want you to walk like God. I want you to walk with power. All right. He says, I want you to walk in all, in, in all purity. And he says, don't even, these things shouldn't even be named among the saints. And here's what I found out this week because I was studying from Lynn Kowick, who's uh, the Bible scholar that's going to be with us on Tuesday, who has been studying the book of Ephesians for 14 years. She said, this was happening not because there was sexually, because it was sexual immorality in the church, but because people outside the church were trying to pour the church folk out. 
They were living in a time where the goddess of that world, her name was Princess Diana, not Princess Diana, her name was Diana, okay? She was known to be a sex god. So God is telling Paul to say, tell the people to be sexually pure in a world where it seems impossible. Be celibate when people are laughing at you when you say, I'm not sleeping with you. Be, be, be sound and sober in your thinking when people will make fun of you for doing it God's way. Because in today's world, the world says right is wrong and wrong is right. But God says, if you do it my way, it'll be a blessing to you. If you do it my way, you won't regret it. If you do it my way, your kids and your kids' kids will praise you. If you do it my way, you'll save yourself a lot of time. You'll save yourself a lot of tears. You'll save yourself a lot of pain. You can delete your marriage a blige list. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you do it my way, you can save yourself a lot of heartache. And I'll say this and I'll move on. He's not only talking about fornication. He's talking about sex outside of marriage. I'm saved, but I'm in a thruple. I know you lying. What? What? How does it make sense? He's saying, I want you to live your life in a way that's pleasing to me. Do not walk in darkness. And the last point that I have here is this. He says, instead of doing that, he says in verse number eight, he says, for at one time you were darkness, but now you have become. Man, I need to put on my glasses so I can see this. He says, at one time. You were in darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, you are a son of God. Now live like it. You are a child of God. Now live like it. Here's where the church goes wrong sometimes. The church, we try to put God's standards on everybody. We try to say, hey, man. If your unchristian friends are doing things that dishonor God, that has nothing to do with you. The Bible is written to who? Christians. If you're not a Christian, you don't got to obey this. Now you're going to deal with the consequences of not obeying God. But this is written to believers. So he says, walk as children of light. And here's what, he, here's what I want to highlight real quick. He says, walk as children. In other words, when your child is just learning to walk, sometimes they don't know where they're going. So what will they do? They'll grab your hand. Because they know you know where I need to be. So I'm going to grab your hand. You know where I need to go. And some of us need to stop lying and saying I got it. And grab on to God's hand. Some of us need to lie, stop lying and saying I can handle it. And grab on to God's hand. He says walk as children. In other words, depend on God. Say, Lord, I know it's a good offer. But what do you want me to do? Because I want to depend on you. I know she looked good. But what you want me to do? Because I'm trying to depend on you. I know he fine. I keep, I'm sorry. I got to go back to it. Sometimes the enemy tricks us so bad because he'll be like, you know what? Y'all, y'all got to live together. I know you ain't married, but y'all got to live together because you'll save money. God, what? Now we were just talking about something where I don't know if it was somebody we know. I think it was a celebrity or something. Oh, somebody who's living with somebody and they ain't even together no more, but they're still staying together. Because it was convenient and neither of them can afford to move out now. And God said, no, don't do it that way. Trust me that my way is better. Trust me that what is an inconvenience will actually be a blessing to you. He says, I want you to walk. He says, this is what this means. It means depend on me for everything. I said it before and I'll say it again. Don't. How do we walk as children of life? How do we walk like God will want us to walk? We don't make any decisions outside of the prayer room. When somebody gives you an offer, you can't refuse, pray about it, and then get back to them. Just because it sounds good don't mean it is good. Just because it sounds like a deal don't mean it is a deal. And just because it sounds like it's got it going on don't mean it's got it going on. I remember back in the day at the barbershops, they used to sell bootleg movies. And you'll be like, what? I can see bad boys. What number are we on? Four. For five dollars? And you get it, you be like, man, I got this steel false. We about to go home. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You put it in your DVD player and you turn it up and somebody is in front of the camera the whole time like this. They in there dancing and smoking weed and partying and you hear the whole movie, but you don't see a thing. And that's how it is when you don't live your life based on God. You think you're getting a hookup, but you're really getting bamboozled. You're really being destroyed. You're really wasting your time, your talent, and your energy. So depend on God and walk as a child of life. Because otherwise, you think you're getting hooked up, but you're really getting robbed. He says, walk 
as a child of light. Lean on God. Depend on God. Trust in God. I'm going to, I already read this verse, so I'm done. I'm going to pray. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you today. We thank you that you love us enough to tell us the truth. We thank you today that you love us enough to call us by your name. We thank you today that you love us enough to call us the sons and the daughters of the almighty God. We thank you that you care for us enough to call us to a higher standard. It's not easy, but you do it through your power and through your spirit. Lord, some of us, we felt a little bit of discomfort today based on what was shared. Lord, but I pray that you would help us to walk as children of light. Help us to yield to you. Help us to agree with you that your way is better. We give you great praise, great glory, great honor. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.